Hello, I'm Peter Blackwood. Welcome back to Icon Diary. I'm very excited. I have written a book and it has just arrived from the printers and I, it is now available for purchase. Now, if you've been paying attention to my videos over the past few years, you will know that I've been painting a series of icons depicting the saints who are listed in the calendar of other commemorations of the Uniting Church in Australia. Over eight years I have painted 114 icons in this project. Now, photography is another interest of mine, so of course I photographed them all and thought, well, they could go into a book. An obvious text to go with these photos would be a biography of each of the holy ones that I painted. So I didn't do that. I figured there were plenty of places people could go to if they want biographies of the, the great and the good. Letting the icons speak for themselves as much as possible seemed like a good idea. But I did want to say something interesting about them. So I decided to tell the story of why I painted all these icons. Long story short, in 2013 I was asked to help coordinate the Uniting Church Icon Schools. Three classes of happy icon painters who meet monthly to paint and be instructed in the traditions of iconography. This task uh, involved uh, administration, well that's no problem, I was retiring from a number of years as a, a church bureaucrat. The problem was the volunteer position would also require me to help teach painting icons. Now, part of this wasn't a problem. I'd started my working life as a school teacher. The problem was that despite about 10 years of painting icons, I wasn't all that confident as a painter and not at all confident to teach painting. Part of the plan to overcome these inadequacies was to paint a lot of icons to get more experience and the list of the other commemorations gave me plenty of subjects to work on. So, to accompany this book of photos of the icons I painted, I've told the story of how painting them helped me gain some confidence and competence to teach iconography. The book is called, In His Image, Icons That Taught Me to Paint. I also got a lot of help from Philip Davidov and Olga Shalomova from St. Petersburg, who over a number of years conducted icon classes in Melbourne. They crop up in my story quite a lot. Philip and Olga have been active in protesting the war in Ukraine and have now relocated to Tbilisi in Georgia. So, very excited. The book is available for sale, so see the, the link below this uh, online, uh, and there's a description uh, uh, in that, uh, uh, in that, on that page. Now, it costs uh, $55 Australian, which includes postage. Um, let me read a little of my book to you. Chapter 1, Learning to Teach, the, the story begins. It took me a year to paint my first icon and two days to paint my most recent one. Looking at the two of them, you wouldn't think they were the work of the same artist. And in a sense, that is true. The iconographer who began the journey in uh, 2003 is not the same as the one still painting nearly 20 years later. This book contains photos of 114 icons that I painted from 2014 to 2022. They depict saintly followers of Jesus through the ages and traditions of the Christian Church from a calendar of other commemorations listed by the Uniting Church in Australia. I know that I have already uh, confused some of my readers. Many familiar with the world of icons will be saying, tut, tut, surely you meant to say 
it took a year to write my first icon. Therein lies one of the differences in who I was and how I have changed. There is a tradition in Byzantine iconography that prefers to write icons. For many years I subscribed to this preference. There is some current debate that argues for giving credit to the craft of painting as an honourable means of proclaiming God. I am now persuaded that the brush is as mighty as the pen. Uh, elsewhere in this text, I, uh, I talk about some of the uh, ecumenical uh, interest that I have. And uh, uh, I, mm, let me think. I was writing about uh, Paul Couturier. Uh, here he is on uh, page, where are we, page 60. There he is. And when I was writing about him, because he uh, established the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity, and I wanted to say something about my own experience of ecumenism, and uh, so I, I wrote this about this little story. A tangible act of Christian unity for me happened when I was invited with an Anglican and a Roman Catholic colleagues to conduct a service of the blessing of the fishing fleet on the Warnable Breakwater. At the conclusion of the service, the fleet of little boats joined in a sail past. One boat broke free from the convoy and drew closer to the breakwater. The fishermen at the tiller shouted up to us, Can you give us a special, Father? I haven't had much luck lately. The three of us, dressed the same, albs and stoles, without a word, without rehearsal, and in absolute unison, raised our right hands in the accustomed posture for bestowing the blessing and made the sign of the cross over him and his little boat. Quite a number of my icons don't look like traditional icons. And, and I, I write about this uh, because it, uh, it seems important. I've said, in the world of iconography, there is another point of division. The faces of traditional Eastern icons have a distinctive look. They have a style that separates them from painted portraits. The influence of Western portraiture often shows up in Orthodox icons, and there has been vigorous pushback from many contemporary iconographers. Philip Davidov and Olga Shalomova took me and Sue, that's my wife, to see their church of uh, Fyodorovsky Cathedral in St. Petersburg. It was built in 1912 to commemorate the 300th anniversary of the Romanov dynasty. It was the church of Tsar Nicholas II. The church was used as a milk factory during the Soviet era and finally fell into ruin. It has been beautifully restored. The royal connection is obvious in the gold encrusted canopy where the Tsar used to stand. On the back of a pillar is an icon depicting the royal family. On our tour, we were taken to higher stories of the building till we reached a room where an artist was painting an icon of Tsarina Alexandra, the wife of Nicholas II. Philip and the iconographer got into an animated conversation. Philip explained to me that they were discussing why the icon, icon was depicting the empress in a photorealistic style. The artist argued that everyone knows what Alexandra looked like. So he wanted his icon to look like what people know from her photos. Philip argued that her face should be stylized in the tradition of Orthodox icons. So I, I go on to say, I am torn. I agree with Philip. He is right to be proud of the style his father taught him and the traditions that reach back beyond the time of Peter the Great, who encouraged a Western influence in many aspects of Russian life, including icons. My problem is that the list of saintly people I was painting include many people whose photos 
have made them well known. I'm fearful that any attempt by me to stylize their faces may result in comical caricatures rather than respectful reminders of their witness to Christ in the church. I use photos and painted portraits as models for many of my icons. In most cases, the photos and paintings would have had the approval of the subjects. That is how they wanted to be represented to the world and to the church. I'm best at painting what I see and remain content to live with the pain the disagreement may bring from my choices. I add that Philip and Olga have graciously exhibited my work in their exhibitions in Melbourne, including my photorealistic style icons. Let me also say as an aside, and I have a footnote in the book, in the, in the book that at this time, Philip and Olga uh, are living in effect in exile. They have relocated to Tbilisi in uh, Georgia because they have been active in their objection to their country's war against Ukraine. Because they have protested, because they have been outspoken, they certainly have been living in danger of arrest and imprisonment. So we're thankful that they are now safe in a neighbouring country. Well, thank you for watching and remember that the details of the sale of this book are, uh, can be seen at the uh, bottom of this image. Thanks for watching. See you next time.